from the station working for you. This is Good Morning Indiana, streaming now. It's Thursday, November 12th, and right now on Good Morning Indiana. Too many have said, we'll just write it out. And if I get it, so be it. The Hoosier State is tightening coronavirus restrictions. We're live breaking down what it means for you and your family. Protesters taking to the streets once again, voicing their frustrations over the Drajon Reed case. This morning, their demands moving forward. We continue to step up our efforts to get the food out into the community. Plus, a local hospital is dishing out more than health care, how they're helping feed our community. And this morning, depending on where you live, you may need to get out that ice scraper. Check out this picture this morning coming in from Rush County. Our photographer, Shay Goodpastor, sending us this image this morning. And Lauren, already I have tweeted out, I am missing Monday already. Yeah, not something we normally hear from you, Raphael, as we're finally at Thursday through the work week. But yeah, we had nice weather to kick <laughs> off our week. And Kyle Mounts is here filling in for our Todd Clausen today. Kyle, it is great to see you, but you don't have the best news to bring us today in terms no. of the temperatures. Yeah, good morning to you. I was enjoying that warmth like yeah. everybody else here earlier in the week. Some record highs in the 70s. And now we've got this, a big change, isn't it? It looks like a bit of an ice rink, but yeah, some frosty windshields. So allow a little extra time to let it defrost or scrape it off there this morning. We got 25 degrees in Kokomo, so we got some cold air out there. It's 33 right now downtown, 32 for you in the Shelbyville area. And these numbers are colder than when you stepped out the door 24 hours ago. They're about 15 to 20 degrees colder. Good news is things are kind of leveling off, but we do have some fog. Notice that visibility half mile or less around Lafayette, even as we get into Logansport and Monticello this morning. Otherwise, we are going to see some quiet weather. Lots of sunshine today. Temperatures make their way into the lower and middle 50s. Lauren. All right, Kyle, thanks so much. Let's take a look at traffic as you're heading out the door this morning. Taking you over here to the east side, this is I-70 near Sherman Drive, where traffic is moving along up to speed with eastbound and westbound. Not monitoring any crashes on your roads around the metro area to slow down your commute, but of course, we'll keep you updated. Now to the coronavirus pandemic and its impact in our state. State health officials confirm nearly 5,200 more Hoosiers testing positive for the virus. 31 more Hoosiers with coronavirus have died. On the right side of your screen, you can see the latest county color status. Nine of the state's 92 counties, as you can see, are right now in red status. This morning, Governor Holcomb says the state's positivity rate more than doubled since his reopening plan moved into stage five. And now he's taking action by reinstating some new restrictions. WRTV's Kelsey Anderson joins us live this morning with the latest rules and what they mean for you. Kelsey, good morning. Hey, good morning, Raphael. So according to the White House Coronavirus Task Force, Indiana is ranking the 14th highest amount of COVID-19 cases per 100,000 people across the country. And that's why Governor Holcomb is putting some of those restrictions back in place because hospitals are now at critical conditions with, you know, beds being full and then nurses and doctors, they have that fatigue. So they are short staffed now also. So take a look at this color coded map. It's updated every single week. And right now, no county is in the blue, meaning all counties have moderate to high levels of community spread. So beginning this weekend, November 15th, counties in the orange will be limited to social gatherings of 50 people and red counties will be limited at 25 people and indoor special events must submit a plan to their local health department and receive approval before proceeding. The mask mandate also remains intact. The governor announcing $20 million will be made available to local cities, towns and counties to help with compliance. As hospitals really begin to feel the pinch and worry they'll have to start cutting services and elective surgeries, the state health commissioner explains why taking a step back is necessary. We've doubled our cases every week for four weeks now, and we know that a certain percentage of those individuals, especially our elderly individuals, will end up in the hospital. And so consequently, if we turn this around now and decrease those cases, we still have that 10 days to two weeks of individuals that are still going to hit our hospital system. So, yes, 
This is why we have to turn the tide now. This is why we need to make changes now. And, you know, the governor's talking about not wanting to close businesses down, but the reality is some of our schools are having trouble staying open because of the number of teachers and students that are sick and on quarantine. Soon that will happen or it is already happening with our businesses across the state. So one way or the other, things will shut down and decrease if we don't take proactive action now. So again, every county in Indiana is going to have those new restrictions. Counties in the orange are limited to 50 people at social gatherings, and the nine counties that are in the red as of right now are limited to 25 people at those social gatherings. So for a closer look at that color-coded map to see what's going to happen in your county, you can head over to WRTV.com or you can download the WRTV News app. Reporting live, Kelsey Anderson. WRTV. Kelsey, thank you for breaking that down for us. We can also tell you another school district is going virtual. Hamilton Southeastern School Board approved changes to their schedule on Wednesday night. So starting on Monday, they're moving learning for students grades 7 through 12 online. Grades pre-K through 5 will remain in person, and students in 5th and 6th grade will stay on the current hybrid schedule. According to the district's older stu uh, students were moved online because they're more independent and take virtual learning easier. The changes will remain in place until winter break on December 18th, but it still could change. Hamilton Southeastern's decision comes after Fishers announced the new guidelines. The city's health department says the city is now at risk level 4, which means the risk for the spread of COVID-19 is high and additional steps need to be taken to help prevent the infection among residents. So the city has these recommendations. First, they say you should avoid gatherings in homes, workplaces, and churches. Fisher's Health Department says you should stay home except for essential services like school, work, health care, and groceries. And make sure you wear a mask, practice social distancing, and sanitize your hands often. You can read all of the recommendations and the guidelines for Fisher's by downloading the WRTV mobile app. Raphael? Uh, uh, Lauren, Indiana's nursing homes are continuing to take the brunt of this pandemic with the most vulnerable populations in our state, in many cases living in those facilities. This morning, this morning nursing home deaths account for 57% of the state's COVID-19 deaths. Health officials say 147 nursing home residents have died with the virus in the last week. Since the pandemic began, nearly 2,600 long-term care residents have died with coronavirus. This morning, we're learning more about when a potential coronavirus vaccine could arrive here in our state. State officials expect to receive the Pfizer vaccine first. Earlier this week, Pfizer reported a 90% effective rate in preventing COVID-19 in their initial clinical tests. The company may submit an emergency use authorization from the FDA as early as next week. The vaccine from the company Moderna could arrive by the end of the year. A state health officials say they won't give out any doses of any of those vaccines until they are all cleared with an emergency use authorization from the Food and Drug Administration. Time right now is 6.08, turning now to demonstrations here in Indianapolis. The demonstrators say they'll continue to march through Indianapolis in protest of the decision in the Drajon Reed case. On Tuesday, the special prosecutor announcing the grand jury's decision not to indict IMPD officer DeJour Mercer, who shot Reed back in May after the police chase, citing a lack of evidence. Well, that spurred reaction from the community in these peaceful protests. Instead of going downtown, the groups met at the Lafayette Square Mall last night for a second day of demonstrations. Demonstrations. Then they traveled down Lafayette to 38th Street at the IMPD district headquarters where Officer Mercer reports to work. The group saying they'll continue to fight for justice for Drajon Reed. We will definitely be being active Friday through Sunday. The protesters did disrupt traffic there. The event did remain peaceful, however, and you could read more about the grand jury's decision and the new evidence that was released by state police broken down for you by downloading the WRTV mobile app. Let's now take you to Hamilton County, where judges are reviewing cases heard by a former magistrate convicted on drug charges. Magistrate William Greenway was fired last year following his arrest. He was later convicted for meth possession and resisting law enforcement after he bought drugs from an undercover informant. The Hamilton County Court Administration tells WRTV, if you had a case with Greenaway's court and you believe you may be entitled to relief, that you should review Trial Rule 60 for post-conviction relief. Greenaway is currently suspended from practicing as a judge. 
The Northwest Hendrick School Corporation parting ways with its communications consultant. The district hired administrator assistant and public relations consultant Donna Petrates back in October of 2019. Northwest Hendricks has faced criticism for how it handled sexual misconduct allegations involving teacher and student. Superintendent Dr. Scott Silverson says the district ended the contract because administrator assistance was no longer needed. WRTV investigates sent a public records request on September 23rd asking for all compensation paid to Petrates. We still have not received an answer. We do know that Petrates earned $750 a day plus mileage while working for the district. Petrates released the following statement saying, quote, I credit the administration and school board at Northwest Hendricks for recognizing that they needed help to maintain their obligation to stakeholders to remain transparent and communicative throughout a very challenging time. I am pleased they have reached a point where they can focus all their energy on doing what they do so well, providing an excellent education for their students, end quote. The pandemic impacting all types of organizations, including those lending a hand for the holidays. Coming up, we talk with the leaders of Moselle Sanders and their call for help this Thanksgiving. But on this Thursday, we begin, of course, with a look at your forecast with our very own Kyle Mounts. Good morning, Kyle. And good morning to you, Raphael. Earlier in the week, we put together a nice string of temperatures in the 70s. Now we're in for a cool stretch, those highs at or below average through Monday. But we'll talk about when a warm-up will return. You're watching Good Morning Indiana here on WRTV. Welcome back. So can you believe Thanksgiving is two weeks from today? Time is just flying by and with the coronavirus pandemic, organizations serving the community like the Mosul Sanders Foundation could put, be put in a pinch this year. Don Jones from Mosul Sanders is joining us live via Zoom this morning. Don, thanks for making time to join us so early this morning. First, talk to me a little bit about how the pandemic is impacting your guys' ability to serve our community this year. Yes. Um, as can be expected, the uh, it has really impacted the community. There is far more need um, than we have seen in previous years. Uh, when we give food away on the second Thursday of every month, we're just seeing an increased numbers and families needing help. And can you talk to me a little bit about the situation with Butler University? You guys usually use the kitchen to prepare for the Thanksgiving meal. So what's the case this year? Well, um, unfortunately, we weren't able to use um, our hub of operations at Butler this year, uh, which, of course, you know, Delta is a pretty significant uh, blow. Uh, we have been meeting uh, essentially since the end of May, um, doing our Plan B meetings every week to determine how we were going to shift to be able to still um, provide uh, for families of the Indianapolis area. So what we did was we reached out to some partners, some churches, some community centers that all have kitchens, a commercial kitchens and um, even some uh, actual local restaurants are helping us um, there's still a need for that but right now we've got about um, 13 partners that'll be cooking the foods for us um, and then we'll um, bring that back to a main hub of operations which will be at Friendship Baptist Church and then distributing the meals from there and Don I've been to this event when they're getting ready in the early morning hours. There's a lot of food to prepare and the volunteers, they love doing what they do, helping people out. What's it looking like for volunteers this year and how can people sign up to help you guys out? Um, looking really good this year. I'm getting lots and lots of response. Um, I just love the Hoosier hospitality. and Everybody is ready to chip in um, when there's a need. Um, we still need volunteers. We will always take volunteers. We'll never turn anyone away, but things are going along pretty well um, right now. Starting to really kind of heat up people kind of once we shifted into the month of November, everybody kind of like, wait a minute, it's that time of year. And so people have been reaching out to us to uh, be able to volunteer to help us on that Thursday. Don Jones with Mosul Sanders. Thank you so much for making time to chat with us today. And we'll be in contact with you soon as we continue to get closer to Thanksgiving. Great. Thank you. 
All right, let's take a turn right now to our forecast. Kyle, we're inching towards Thanksgiving and it's cooling down here. <laughs> we are. I did not realize it's only two weeks away. So, right. Uh, thank you for that. Maybe the warmth earlier in the week kind of threw us off a little bit, but we're back on track now. It's 33 degrees downtown, a little bit of a northeast breeze out there, so it does feel like 27 in Indianapolis. We've got some 20s out there. Kokomo, you're in the middle to upper 20s right now, but look at the colder air overspreading the region. That warmth that we had earlier Earlier in the week, it is getting squeezed out of the country here. Still a couple of 60s and even a 70 degree reading there in the Carolinas. There's the rain and the wet weather that we also had, although we didn't have a lot of rain out of that. There's also tropical system Ada, a tropical storm here, which is once again making landfall across Florida. Some storm surge issues and with the slow movement, the heavy rain has been a problem as well. The good news is this thing is going to be picking up speed. It's got winds of 50 miles per hour this morning, but as it tracks off to the north and east, it's off the coast of the Carolinas there as we get overnight tonight. And of course, this is going to be staying well off to our southeast, not going to be impacting our weather. And we're not going to need the umbrella on Friday either. As we go into the weekend, though, you might want to grab it as you have those weekend plans here. We've got some scattered showers in the forecast today. Mostly sunny skies, though temperatures they will feel a little bit better as we have the sunshine and a fairly light wind. 47 at noon. We'll get those numbers into the 50s later today. 53 for you in Frankfurt and Anderson. 52 in Kokomo this afternoon after starting off in the 20s. We'll get those numbers to 56 for you in Martinsville, Shelbyville, and 53 in Newcastle. And numbers south of I-70 will make their way into the middle and upper 50s. Tonight, we do have a weather system that's going to be moving in. It will increase the clouds, maybe bring a sprinkle very light shower to the area. Not going to really measure much of anything out of that system, but it will knock the temperatures back down here for our Friday. We're back into the sunshine, but look at those numbers. Don't think we'll be getting out of the 40s tomorrow. The weekend planner brings in that chance for more widespread rain, a high temperature of 50 degrees for you on Saturday, close to 60 on Sunday, and there's that wet weather moving in Saturday morning, and it looks like it will linger at least into the first half of Sunday. Could bring us about a half inch of wet weather. Seven day planning forecast for you now as we put it all together. There are those highs that will warm up briefly on Sunday. Then it turns cooler with dry weather on Monday and Tuesday. 56 by Wednesday, and it looks like we'll get maybe into some more 60s just beyond that seven day forecast. Lauren, how are things on the roads this oh, morning? Things are pretty quiet right now, Kyle. That's good news for drivers this Thursday morning. Here's a live look from our in-dot traffic camera up in the Lebanon area, I-65 north of State Road 267, where you can see by the headlights moving across your screen, traffic's traveling up to speed both northbound and southbound, so no problems to report in Boone County this morning. Of course, we'll continue to keep a close eye on those roads and keep you updated. Raphael? So the Rebound Indiana is our focus here at WRTV. We really our commitment to make sure that we show how you and other groups are stepping up to help Hoosier families get through this pandemic. And so today with Indiana Grown, we're looking at a unique operation at Eskenazi Health, and they're tackling hunger right here in the Circle City, Raphael. So since mid-July, Eskenazi Health has teamed up with Gleaners Food Bank to create a network of distribution locations to combat hunger in our community. It's a project that is made possible through funds from the USDA's Farmers to Families Coronavirus Food Assistance Program. It's a fast-growing initiative thanks to a thriving volunteer base and a growing need in this pandemic. And Eskenazi Health tells us that this holistic health of the people in our community, it's important as we work to combat the virus. You can see we've got some of the boxes here. Uh, these these ind individual boxes are getting passed out at our three different uh, food distributions that we do throughout the city on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. You know, we continue to step up our efforts to get the food out into the community and make sure that it's getting to the, the folks that need it the most. Through this initiative, Eskenazi Health projects to serve more than 32,000 families by the end of the year. They've also teamed up with Second Helpings to provide family meals from mesh on mass to families in need right here in Indianapolis. So for more on the times and locations of the distribution sites, you can just click on this story at WRTV.com slash rebound. Another one of our great initiatives, of course, is our Hiring Hoosiers commitment. And today, WRTV is teaming up with the Indiana Black Expo for a job fair. This virtual Hiring Hoosiers Employment Opportunity Fair is today from noon until 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Multiple companies are taking part, including FedEx, First Merchants Bank, 
Indianapolis Airport Authority, Lowe's, and many more. For more information and to sign up, go to HiringHoosiers.com and, of course, participate in that job fair, which begins at noon today. We'll be right back, right here on WRTV. Welcome back to WRTV. So what is trending at 6? And Lauren, I want you to know that I am here for you no matter what you need. 24-7, you call me and I am there. But I don't think I can do what this officer did <laughs> if you called me. So I just want to make sure okay, that I'm your buddy, right? Yeah, we understand that. Okay, I was going to say, you may want to wait till you hear this story before you offer up your services, Raphael. A police officer in Richmond Heights, Ohio, noticed a family parked on the side of the road. So Jonathan Ross realized that the woman in the car, she was in labor. Ross coached the mom to push the baby out. But when the baby came out, it wasn't breathing. So Ross had to remove the amniotic sac from the baby's head and then was released leave to hear it crying. Fellow officers say they've never seen anything like Ross's heroism. Glad he was there. Right place, right time. Well, that's what all our officers are always doing. Good things. And listen, Lauren, I could be a good godfather and I give good gift <laughs> baskets. Yes. For the and you do some Spanish so lessons. You know yeah. Yes, yes. We'll leave the baby deliveries to those great officers. <laughs> hey, check out this view. This picture is from Jennifer Tinkham, and it was taken on a much, much warmer day, of course. This is Shades State Park. Check this out. It covers Montgomery Park and Fountain Counties. What a beautiful view of a fall day here in Indiana. A great place to take a walk, even on a day like today, Cal Mounts. Well, it's a little chilly, but you know what? It is what it is, right? This is Indiana, and we enjoy all of our seasons. That's right, and there is still some very nice fall color out there to enjoy, although some of those trees are really starting to get stripped of those leaves, aren't they? Well, today we're not going to have a whole lot of wind out there, but there are the cooler temperatures. We'll be in the 30s here through 9 a.m. Then we'll start to warm up a little bit, getting into the 50s. So the kids, they're going to need to layer up a little bit here as they head off to the bus stop. 33 degrees for that bus stop forecast, but as they get ready, to head home. We're at 52 with the sun shining there. As we look beyond the seven day forecast here, we look at November 20th through the 26th. We are going to trend those temperatures back above average. Keeping in mind, though, that the average is continuing to fall this time of year. By the time we get into that period, we're talking about highs in the 40s for averages and lows that are knocking on the door of the 20s. So we are likely to see some warmer temperatures, but maybe not the 70s, Lauren. All right, Kyle. Well, since we are cooling down here, you could say lots of us may need a vacation soon. Maybe Todd's on a vacation. <laughs> we'll find out. But if you, you might want to think twice before you post about those travels online. This morning, our own John Matteris explains why. So you're not caught by the vacation police. With quarantine rules popping up again during COVID's big resurgence this November, we have a caution about bragging about any out-of-state travel right now. So we wanted to update a warning we first issued back in August. Nothing like posting Instagram photos of your awesome Verbo rental or the family all lined up on the beach at sunset. But this year, watch out. Friends may make you feel guilty for it. USA Today says you need to be prepared for the vacation police. Business Insider calls it travel shaming, people making you feel guilty for visiting other states. As a result, Business Insider says many people are keeping their vacations quiet and going silent on social media. Neighbors may worry you are bringing COVID back to town with you and may tell you to stay in your house for the next 14 days. With more states imposing quarantines right now on travel, you might not want to brag about any out-of-state travel at this point. That way there's no fallout and you don't waste your money. I'm John Matteries. Good morning, Indiana. From the station working for you, this is Good Morning Indiana, streaming now. Now on Good Morning Indiana on this Thursday morning, this is your 630 News Feed. Eli Lilly and company boosting production of its COVID-19 antibody drug now that the FDA has granted an emergency use authorization. 88,000 doses of the antibody drug have been shipped to a distributor. That distributor will work with the government to determine where it should be shipped based on current COVID-19 rates. 
Well, the election is over, but the Indianapolis Zoo does need your vote. The zoo has once again been nominated for USA Today's 10 Best Zoo Lights list. This is their sixth straight nomination with three top five finishes. The zoo hopes that you'll help them make it to number one this year. You can do that by voting for them once a day through December 7th. We have a link to do that at WRTV.com. WRTV also getting ready for the holiday season and hoping to put smiles on the faces of boys and girls all over central Indiana. Our 20th annual toy drive kicks off this Saturday at Christmas Nights of Lights at the Indiana State Fairgrounds. The holiday display is a drive through experience that all can enjoy. One dollar for every ticket sold on Saturday will go to the WRTV Toy Drive. What a great event, Lauren, for families to enjoy as, of course, we're in this pandemic issue. Just load up the car, head out to the state fairgrounds and enjoy the sights in a nice, toasty vehicle. Yes, that is an important note, Raphael, because it is cooling down here across central Indiana and Kyle Mounts is here to break it down. What we can expect today, Kyle? Yeah, Lauren and Raphael, and as we get into the weekend, we're going to have some rain too, so another good reason for staying in the car. No rain today. We've just got those chilly numbers. 25 still for you there in Kokomo. You've been kind of locked in there throughout the morning right at the freezing mark in Shelbyville and Bloomington and just above it in Indianapolis at 33, but these numbers are are about 10 to 20 degrees colder than when you stepped out the door yesterday morning. But things are starting to level off a little bit. Now we do have some pockets of some dense fog out there under a half mile visibility around Logansport and Monticello with those temperatures below the freezing mark could have some isolated slick spots. So just kind of be mindful of that. The rain well off to our southeast and you can see just a few clouds that'll be sneaking in later today, but still sunshine will win out here. We'll get to 47 at noon and numbers that are in the lower to middle 50s, Lauren, for that afternoon high. All right, Kyle, thanks so much. Things are quiet on the roads this morning. I-65 at I-465 up on the northwest side in the dog leg. You can see here traffic is moving along smoothly. Right now I'm not monitoring any crashes or slowdowns for your Thursday morning commute, Raphael. Well, so Lauren, once President-elect Joe Biden takes office, a Hoosier, a Hoosier will take be in charge of his day-to-day -day operations at the White House. Political veteran Ron Klein has accepted an offer to be the next White House Chief of Staff. Klein is a graduate of North Central High School in Indianapolis. He served as Biden's Chief of Staff during the early years of his vice presidency. He was also the White House Ebola Response Coordinator in 2014 and has taken considerable interest in the response to this pandemic. That's a central priority for the incoming Biden administration. A formal announcement on his appointment is expected later today. The president-elect is also narrowing down the rest of his senior team of West Wing advisors. Some announcements are possible before the end of the week, followed by others in the weeks to come. Cabinet announcements are likely in early December or early January. Among those being mentioned for possible positions is former South Bend mayor and Democratic presidential candidate Pete Buttigieg. Well, President Trump's legal team continuing to challenge the vote count in one of the states that he lost in this year's election, and now Indiana taxpayers are supporting part of that legal effort. This week, State Attorney General Curtis Hill announcing that Indiana was joining a lawsuit pending at the U.S. Supreme Court that deals with the vote count in Pennsylvania. The lawsuit says the Pennsylvania Supreme Court unlawfully extended the state's deadline for mail-in ballots to arrive in election offices. Hill says Indiana has an interest in this case, and that's because he says the Supreme Court should rule that only legislative not the state courts can set those election deadlines. Now to the latest on the COVID-19 crisis across our state. As the semester is winding down across colleges across Indiana, some campuses already looking ahead to the spring semester. Purdue University has announced details of its Protect Purdue COVID-19 testing plan for students returning to campus in the upcoming spring semester. Here are a few things that students need to know. All students must be tested for COVID-19 and be cleared for campus access before moving into the residence halls or fraternity, sorority, and cooperative living homes or attending classes. Students who are arriving from outside the United States must self-quarantine for 14 days and coordinate with the Protect Purdue Health Center to schedule a COVID-19 test before coming to campus. Purdue says it will cover the cost of pre-arrival COVID-19 testing for students who are registered for in-person classes. 
COVID-19 restrictions coming back here. Next, we'll take a look at how the governor is taking action to battle a rise in new cases. It's 634. Stick around. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Good Morning Indiana on this Thursday. The number of hospitalized COVID-19 patients in our state is at an all-time high. This morning, hospital officials believe that patient numbers may double in just a couple of weeks. The seven-day positivity rate is now at 10.3%. That's up nearly 6% from when Indiana moved into stage five. And with that, of course, and that spike, there's a call now for Indiana leaders to take a step back as part of the reopening plan, Lauren. And Raphael, Governor Holcomb announced new restrictions on Wednesday. Those restrictions are actually tied to where you live. And so our Kelsey Anderson has more on what that rollback means for you and your family. Kelsey? Well, the state of Indiana is hitting the pause button on the reopening plan as they are trying to get a grip on the COVID-19 cases here in Indiana. Yesterday, Governor Holcomb announcing that he's going to be reinstating some of those COVID-19 restrictions. The new steps will limit crowd sizes in those counties at the higher risk levels of coronavirus spread, which at this point is every county in the state. The new executive order will take effect this Sunday, limiting crowd sizes to 25 people in the highest risk red counties and 50 people in the next riskiest orange counties. The new orders will also limit capacity at K through 12 sports and extracurricular activities. In February and in March, the world didn't know a lot about how COVID-19 was transmitted. We're in a different time now. We all know now. And we know what we can do to protect ourselves and one another. Governor Holcomb is also extending the statewide mask mandate for another month. Back in September, the governor lifted nearly all of Indiana's businesses and crowd size restrictions. Since then, Indiana hospitals have seen a 200% increase in COVID-19 patients, and the seven-day rolling average of deaths has gone from 10 to 10 a day to 38 a day. So to learn more about those restrictions in your county, you can head over to WRTV.com to get a look at that color-coded map, or you can download the WRTV news app. Working for you, Kelsey Anderson, WRTV. Kelsey, thank you. It is 639. Governor Holcomb not the only one outlining a spike in COVID-19 cases here in our state. The White House Coronavirus Task Force also says the situation here at home is getting worse. The task force's most recent report was obtained by ABC News. It says Indiana now is in the red zone for cases. That means 100 or one or more new cases per 100,000 people. 99% of the state's counties now have moderate or high levels of community transmission. The task force recommends additional measures should be taken to reinforce the message about limiting social gatherings. The report also recommends a new asymptomatic surveillance approach to limit community spread. They feed thousands of people every Thanksgiving, but they need your help to pull it off this year. Next, how you can help them make it happen. And as we get ready for Thanksgiving, I'm thankful this morning that Kyle Mounts is with us this morning. Hey, Kyle. Oh, uh, thank you, Raphael. I'm glad to be here and with you guys as well. We've got temperatures that will climb into the mid 50s this afternoon with some sunshine. We do have another cool down coming our way. Also, some rain to talk about in that weekend forecast, but we may not be done with the warmth just yet. Details coming up in your full forecast. You're watching Good Morning Indiana. It's 6:40 a.m. So listen up, Thanksgiving is two weeks from today. And with the coronavirus pandemic, organizations that serve the community like Moselle Sanders could be put in a pinch. Don Jones from the Moselle Sanders joining us live via Zoom again this morning. Don, thanks for making time with us. We talked You're to you welcome. earlier, thank you. Well, we talked to you earlier about how the pandemic is impacting your guys' ability to serve and with the kitchen situation. But can you talk to us a little bit about the need this year? We know the pandemic has hit families really hard. It, it really has, um, and we're actually anticipating an uptick of, of families that need to be served um, compared to previous years. And can you talk to me a little bit about this Thanksgiving meal? We know it's a one day meal, but what does that mean to families who may not be able to provide, you know, this warm Thanksgiving meal for their families? 
Well, Thanksgiving is typically that, that season or that holiday where family comes together and there's usually circling around food and everything. But there are a lot of families that just don't have the resources to be able to do that. So what uh, Moselle Sanders has done um, for 49 years and counting is provide that meal. Um, it is uh, um, turkey. Um, mashed potatoes, gravy, stuffing, um, and or not mashed potatoes, stuffing, green beans, and a dessert. And that's something we've done for um, families for 49 years. And Don, we're watching some video from years past as their volunteers are working hard in the early morning hours to repair that meal. What's volunteering looking like this year in the pandemic? In the pandemic. Well, unfortunately, since we won't be at Butler, which is our normal main hub of operations, we have 13 locations across the city that will be cooking the meals for us. So we will have our volunteers spread out all over Indianapolis area, um, preparing those meals and then boxing them up and getting them ready for delivery. And so if there are people who want to volunteer, want to help you guys out this year or make donations, how do they do that? Um, lots of different ways to be able to do that. Um, the main place to go to is to our website, MoselleSanders.org. Um, at the top, you can click on Moselle on, on volunteer. It'll take you to the area to volunteer. Um, there are currently three locations right now that we need volunteers for. Uh, if you want to donate, um, that's kind of smacked up in the middle of the page, multiple different ways to donate. You can text 3131, or, Text Moselle to 313131 to donate. Um, you can donate from the web website. Um, it'll take you to PayPal. Um, you can also send it to a cash app if that's how you donate. It's at uh, dollar sign Moselle Sanders. It's M O Z E L S A N D E R S. Um, or if you want to, if you choose to use snail mail, which some people are still doing that, um, it's 709 North Belmont Avenue, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46222. All right, well, we have Don Jones again with Moselle Sanders. Thanks so much for making time for us today. And we'll be with you guys on Thanksgiving Day, showing families who need help how they can get that help. So we appreciate everything you guys do. Okay, thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Well, talking about the holidays coming up makes us think about the weather cooling down, and it's doing that right here this week. Kyle, you don't have the best news for us in the temperature department. Uh, yeah, it's certainly a lot cooler than what we started off the week with here, but it's getting a little more November-like out there, and that does mean we've got some temperatures in the 20s this morning. Greencastle at 28, St. Fourier and Lafayette, 29 in Richmond, and 27 degrees in Peru. Columbus now checking in at 28 degrees. Downtown, we've got 33. A little bit of that northeast breeze, though, so it does feel like it's in the 20s at 27 degrees with those clear skies in place. Temperatures for us by 9 a.m. We're dealing with the middle 30s out there, so we'll keep that chill in the air with sunshine. We'll get to 46 here for the lunch hour in Indy, 45 for you in Muncie at about 47 degrees in Bloomington, eventually topping out in the lower to middle 50s for our afternoon high. Of course, that's about 20 to 30 degrees colder than what we had earlier in the week. As far as true cast goes, you can see few clouds for especially northern areas, but I still think you're going to see a lot of sunshine. That will not slow down your warming today at 4 o'clock. Mostly sunny skies. We get into tonight, we are going to have a weather system that rolls through here. Most noticeably, we'll have an increase in the cloud cover. Maybe a sprinkle, an isolated shower here as we go through the overnight. Really not going to measure much out of that system, but we will bring down those temperatures once again for our Friday. The sunshine is back, but I don't think we're going to be getting out of the 40s for the afternoon high there. So if you are heading out for some high school football on Friday evening, layer up, maybe take the blanket along with you as well because we got 37 degrees at 8 a.m. Fortunately, the wind should be fairly light, only around 5 miles per hour, but temperatures in the mid 30s at 9 o'clock. Next chance for some more widespread wet weather comes in here for the weekend. This is a look at Truecast by 7 a.m. on Saturday. I think we're going to be warm enough. It will be all rain. They could see back in portions of Illinois a little bit of a wintry mix. But for us, some light scattered showers. Looks like we could see the most widespread rainfall here as we go overnight into Sunday morning. And then those showers begin to taper off as we go into Sunday afternoon. But you'll want to have that umbrella handy this weekend. About a half inch of wet weather is expected. That seven day planning forecast temperatures kind of bouncing around here. We're around 50 for that high on Friday and Saturday temporarily around 60 on Sunday before it cools down to start next week with dry weather 
And then we're into the middle 50s again on Wednesday. This morning, Lauren, we're needing to scrape off a little frost from that windshield, but how are things on the roads once we get out there? Well, Kyle, things are looking pretty good right now. Here's a look on the northwest side at I-65 and I-465. We've been taking a look all over central Indiana and the metro area, and so far no major crashes or delays to slow down your commute. Of course, we'll continue to monitor that throughout your morning. We'll keep you updated on any trouble spots to avoid. <laughs> Raphael, it is Throwback Thursday, and this idea was pitched as the future of downtown transportation, but it was a project that would never really get off the ground. Live for the people mover? Let me get to the story. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about that later. Then Indianapolis Mayor Bill Hudnut believed that the people mover would be a major part of meeting the downtown area's transportation needs, while at the same time saving, of course, the cost on energy. So back in 1980, Lauren, then WRTV legendary reporter Jack Reinhardt told us that the idea was patterned after the people mover in Munich, Germany. While the route has not yet been finalized, the system is sure to pass close to facilities with a high potential for ridership. Places like Market Square Arena, the Convention Center, and the campus of IUPUI. Other proposals would link it with Metro Bus or to outlying parking areas to further reduce the glut of downtown traffic. I missed that voice, but Jack is doing well, by the way. While downtown Indianapolis did eventually transform, the People Mover was not part of that transformation. However, a People Mover was eventually built by IU Health to connect Methodist Hospital with University Hospital and Riley Hospital for Children. Uh, still, the concept was an expensive one, and after almost 16 years, IU Health closed down its People Mover in February of last year. So, Lauren, I know that you love food, but cooking a Thanksgiving turkey can be a little bit tricky for many of us and to help cover the cost and maybe the failure of cooking if you kind of burn your bird, you can get insurance now. Check this out. Whole Foods is teaming up with Progressive Insurance to provide their first ever turkey protection plan. Whether it's overcooked, undercooked, burnt, extra crispy, or just doesn't taste right, Whole Foods is offering a $35 gift card as insurance. Now, to be eligible, you must buy the Whole Foods market brand turkey between now and November the 22nd. Then, starting Thanksgiving Day, you must be one of the first 1,000 people to submit a claim. Whole Foods says they hope the plan gives customers confidence knowing that all is not lost if things go wrong. And I hope they're not a thousand people who either burn, overcook, or just destroy their turkey. That'd be a sad state of affairs if, you know, yeah. you mess up your turkey dinner. Well, first of all, Raphael, let's get a Whole Foods down on the south side so that we have any chance of getting this insurance or a turkey there. I'm not cooking any turkeys. I don't even know where to Let me call on that right now. Yeah, we'll, we'll work on that first. First and foremost before we get to the Thanksgiving meal. Well, I appreciate the mother-in-law. She, uh, she does all the fixing. She takes care of all of that. So mm. we'll have to figure out how to do Thanksgiving this year in light of COVID. But right. we'll figure it out, right? We'll, we'll, we'll all use our creativity to make sure that we enjoy family time during the holidays. That's so right. <laughs> we'll make it happen. All right. Well, and if you don't do turkey and you enjoy ham, that do your thing. <laughs> well, she was a big winner and honored some of the many overlooked women in country music. Coming up here right on Good Morning America, country superstar Maren Morris talking about her big night at the CMA Awards. We'll be right back after the break. It is 6.54 here on your Thursday morning. Our Kyle Mounts will have a check of your forecast coming up next. But first, let's talk about the top stories, Raphael. Uh, let's get started. One of central Indiana's largest school districts is going virtual because of an increase in COVID-19 cases. The Hamilton Southeastern School Board has voted to move learning for students in grades 7 through 12 online. Grades pre-K through fifth grade will remain in person, and students in fifth and sixth will stay on the current hybrid schedule. The changes will remain in place for the rest of the fall semester. 
Demonstrators say they'll continue to march through Indianapolis in protest in the decision in the Drajan Reed case. On Tuesday, the special prosecutor announced the grand jury's decision not to indict IMPD officer DeJour Mercer, who shot Reed back in May following that police chase, citing a lack of evidence. Instead of going downtown, the groups met at the Lafayette Square Mall last night for a second night of peaceful demonstrations. You can read more about the grand jury's decision, and you can see the evidence released by state police in that case. It's all at WRTV.com. Calm. And later today, WRTV is teaming up with the Indiana Black Expo for a job fair. The virtual Hiring Hoosiers Employment Opportunity Fair is today from noon to four. Multiple companies are taking part, including FedEx, First Merchants Bank, Indianapolis Airport Authority, Lowe's, and many more. For more information on how to sign up and more details on this, please go to Hiring Hoosiers. Dot com. And by the way, there at Hamilton Southeastern, it's grades 6th and 7th, Lauren, that will remain on the hybrid schedule during this period of transition. So just keep that in mind for those of you who live in Fishers. Yes, and as kids are heading out to the bus stop this morning in some districts across our state, Kyle, they may see a little bit of frost out there on the vehicles, maybe sitting in the streets. Yeah, and chew on this. Earlier in the week on Sunday, we were at 79 degrees, Ooh. so now it is 46 degrees colder. Wow. Than it was. And that's how we're ending up with frost, kids. That's what we got <laughs> greeting you out there this morning with temperatures around 33. Today we'll climb to 55. A lot of sunshine expected for us, so it should feel pretty nice, especially that sunshine makes all the difference this time of year. And as we look at that seven day planning forecast, temperature is going to continue to fluctuate quite a bit. We're only around 50 for that high Friday and Saturday. Rain chances, scattered showers for the weekend. Looks like we'll start to warm up by the middle of next week. All right, Kyle, thanks so much. Here's a beautiful view of the sun coming up over downtown Indianapolis. We're back here in 25 minutes throughout Good Morning America with news, weather, and traffic updates. Have a great day.